Hey folks, how are you guys doing? Hope you're all having a great day today. This past, well last week we went to uh, IWF in Atlanta, the International Woodworking Fair. From my understanding, it's the largest woodworking fair, expo, big monster event for woodworking in North America. It was, it was pretty interesting. Uh, the vast majority of what we saw was for industry use, stuff that's just way beyond the scope of what I do, what most of my audience does. Um, like large scale CNC operations that are bigger than my entire shop, stuff like that. Uh, but it was very interesting to see. We did see about, I'd say 30 or so different booths and vendors of stuff that's directly related to stuff that I do, stuff that my audience does, all of you guys watching this. Uh, it, it was just a, it was a fun, fun week that we went and uh, just, just did something different, you know? I wasn't really a, like a get together type of a, an event like I've done, I've done before. So while at IWF, we saw a bunch of other content creators. Uh, just to go through the list here, we saw Fetty. He used to have his channel. I think his channel used to be uh, Blazing Nail Gun, but it's now got it made. Uh, really, really cool dude. Uh, just, a, just a down to earth guy. Uh, it, was, it was great talking to uh, him. And he was actually representing the uh, Castle Company, Pocket Hole Company. So it was good to see him there. Also, I rode with Sean Stone and, and my buddy Jeremy, who's helping here uh, with things around the shop. Uh, that was fun hanging out with them for about a week. A lot of laughters and back and forth jabs at each other, but uh, it, was, it was a great time. Also got to finally meet Jonathan Katz Moses. He's the guy who, I'll grab him real quick. He's the guy who uh, made these magnetic dovetail guides that are just the most versatile ones that I've ever seen, that I've ever used rather. Uh, but anyway, he makes these. Uh, I met him for the first time in person, which was great. We actually ended up playing... Uh, Top golf one of the nights in Atlanta. Uh, I'll get to that in just a second, but it was great meeting him as well. Uh, saw Matt Cremona there. Matt Cremona is, as we all know, a, a tremendously talented craftsman, somebody who's makes some really, really nice stuff, high quality stuff. Uh, but if you don't meet him in person, you just don't understand how, how good of a dude he is. He's just, a, it's just a great level headed guy. And uh, yeah, it was great to see him again. I've met him a couple times previously. Also saw, I'm reading from a list here, by the way. Also saw Woodbrew, Molly and Dylan. Uh, there are a, a couple in their early 20s that has just really got their heads screwed on straight. I wish I had the mentality that they have right now back when I was in my early 20s. They've, they've got some stuff going on that's, that's just really cool. They're actually going to, uh, if everything goes according to plan, they're going to be here in about a month to do a collaboration to... Uh, make some stuff for their their van, their uh, mobile van that they're, I guess turn, I guess all vans are mobile, <laughs> but their uh, camper conversion type van. It's going to be fun. They're uh, going up the east coast right now, up to I think their final destination up there is Maker Fair in New York, if I'm not mistaken. But when they swing back down, they're gonna they're gonna stop by the shop. Looking forward to that. Uh, I also saw. April Wilkerson, Mark Spagnolo, neither one of those two need an introduction. All of you guys know who they are. Uh, Stumpy Nubs, saw him at the Tormac booth, second or third time I've met him. He's a good dude. Also saw um, Brandon from Maddox Woodworking on Instagram. Uh, relatively new to the online content creation type scene, but he's building up his Instagram. And uh, he's here in Mississippi, so it's good to see him over there as well. Saw Chris from... Oh man, what is it? I'll, I'll put his a glimpse inside. That's what it is. Chris from a glimpse inside. That dude's always positive and upbeat and just a just a great personality. Great guy. Saw Donnie Carter there uh, from the Green Woodworker podcast. Saw John, John, not John. I don't know why I said John. Oh, because the last name. Carl Jacobson had a J in it. <laughs> Carl Jacobson um, from uh, woodshop.tv. He's got a, probably the largest wood turning channel on YouTube. And uh, he was at the Easy Wood Tools booth. Some pretty cool stuff that he's got going on, touring around with his mobile wood shop. Uh, that, that was pretty cool to talk to him in person. That's the first time I met him. He's on the upper west coast of the United States, somewhere over there. So uh, geographically, we're pretty far apart. And that was the first time I actually got to see him in the same place. So it's great meeting you, Carl. And then also Johnny Book Brook from Crafted Workshop. Got to see him again. So uh, it, was, it was cool to, to meet up with all of these creators kind of inadvertently. Um, they basically had, you know, different reasons why everybody was there, but it was cool to meet up with everybody and uh, catch up. All right. So just a few quick things on IWF in general. Uh, it was in Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta traffic sucks. That's obvious. Uh, we saw the, I think it's the Mercedes Benz stadium, just completed stadium for the Atlanta Falcons. It's right next to the convention center that, uh, was where the IWF was at. And 
That stadium is pretty awesome to see in person. I haven't been inside it. I think they were doing some tours, but uh, I didn't have time to go inside it. But I've actually been looking forward to seeing that stadium in person because it's a very interesting architectural design. If you look at it from the top, the the top of it kind of sort of, it retracts in the middle, opens and retracts in the middle, but it kind of looks like the aperture blades on a lens. So it, it's just an interesting architectural design. I was actually uh, really wanting to see that. So inside IWF, I uh, saw the Rubio Mono Coat finish done for the first time in person. I've never used their product, never seen it, but I like it so far from what I've seen. And um, very, very easy finish to apply, very difficult to screw up, and it's fast. So that fits all of my criteria. I may give it a go uh, upcoming. I also saw something that was really cool, the Impec, I-M-P-E-K-K, -K, that was their company. They have these really cool cast iron based tables, kind of kind of designer, kind of the industrial look tables, but they had gear reduction in them so that you can crank a handle and the whole table lifts and it was very solid and sturdy. I have no idea how much those things weigh, but it looked like a very, very interesting table platform to build a tabletop on top of. Um, I don't think I'll ever work with one of those just because they are out of Montreal, Canada. They're heavy and I could only imagine the ridiculous amount of shipping needed. But if you're somebody who makes like, um, you know, designer tables, some high end tables for clients, then that might be a good table base for you. I just wanted to throw that out there. No relation with them at all. No relation with any, any of these really. Uh, I saw, I think it was, was it Ramia workbenches? Ramia workbenches. If not, I'll put a correction on the screen, but I think it was Ramia workbenches out of, if I'm not mistaken, the Czech Republic. Uh, but just a just a well done woodworking workbench. But they had a really cool uh, tool toolbox down below that pivoted out and hold basically everything you need for hand tool woodworking. It was just a really cool workbench to, to check out, and I've never he seen that brand here in the United States. So yeah, there's that. I also saw one of the more interesting things that I've seen just because of it combines all of my interests with photography, video, woodworking. Um, and digital stuff was this really, really awesome printer. They had a couple different sizes. Uh, one was uh, printing on, I don't know, maybe eight feet wide. I forget the exact dimensions, but it was massive. It was printing extremely clear on wood veneer. And the images that were being shown on this wood veneer were just, it was just flawless. It looked fantastic. So awesome looking. They were printing on aluminum or some other type of metal. Um, they were printing on cups. They had a system where they had a um, kind of like another axis of rotation uh, for the, the printer to go through to print on cups. Uh, but basically this really, really awesome, awesome, awesome printer system to, if, if you had like a, a company that um, does custom printing canvases or wood or what, whatever you can think of, they can print on it basically as long as it's flat or can maintain a flat plane like a cup. Uh, I don't think I'll ever get one of those because they're a little bit out of my price range, but they were, they were fascinating and the quality of the images was incredible. Uh, also saw the Shaper CNC, I think it was it called Shaper, mm -hmm. Shaper Origin CNC, that handheld CNC that you just run along the wood and it uses a, an imaging software to see the, the sticker tracks I guess you put down before, but that whole concept was it was, was kind of interesting and they also have it set up to where you can do some end grain cutting like cutting out tenons uh, very very versatile machine and they seem to be doing quite well with their um, their promotion and advancement of their products so that was cool to see in person uh, also you know net no woodworking show seems to be complete without a saw stop hot dog demo so we saw one of those as a matter of fact uh, Jeremy, he caught one on his cell phone. He's got a Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. Yeah. yeah. And it shoots 960 frames per second. So we caught that in, in pretty good slow motion, which was pretty interesting. Of course, everyone's seen that a million times, but there's that. Uh, stopped by the uh, hybrid Panther router booth and saw Max Sheldon and then also Cool Deep, the guy who uh, started the whole metal Panther router stuff. Um, and they've got some interesting stuff coming up. They've redesigned the base of their machine to eliminate some things and uh, kind of streamline the, uh, the whole machine. But that's, that's kind of interesting. We saw so many other things. Those are just some of the high points. Um, you know, I could spend 
so long talking about everything that was there. Uh, but as far as IWF goes, like I said, it's primarily geared primarily geared towards industry, primarily geared towards cabinet shops, people who are in the uh, industry of making stuff out of wood. But don't let that discourage you if you ever want to check it out, because there are also a lot of other things that are um, applicable to the hobbyist woodworker or the small shop. Maybe you're just a one, two man person team that makes stuff to sell. There's still a lot of stuff to check out as far as that regard. So that brings us to this week. We got back from Atlanta late Saturday and got back right into the whole computer spiel of emails and all that good stuff. And we've been nonstop working out uh, some other stuff with this office remodel. We've got the uplift desk. I'm kind of looking at it right now. You guys can't, I don't want to show it on camera, but uh, it's fantastic. It's looking great. Babinga is awesome to work with. And I just love saying the word Babinga. That'll be this week's video. If uh, I don't know if I should say this week's video anymore because I don't really do them on a weekly basis anymore, but that'll be out this Sunday. Um, I think that's it. I don't know what else to say. So you guys take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.